And tonight, we have an ABC 7 News I-Team investigation. You might remember the story of the 12-year-old Maryland boy, Diamante Driver. He died from a brain infection that was caused by tooth decay, which is the most untreated of all children's diseases, by the way. Well, now, a five-month-long investigation by the I-Team's Roberta Baskin reveals that children on Medicaid who visit two Washington area clinics are suffering pain for profit, Roberta? It's true. What we saw and heard is really difficult to imagine. Frightened children separated from their parents, crying for their mothers while strapped into restraining devices. It's a Medicaid gold mine and they're drilling for your tax dollars. <coughs> That's four-year-old Miguel. He's been restrained by his dentist on a device called a papoose board. <coughs> and Miguel's mother isn't allowed to watch. That's the policy at Small Smiles. Not that we are doing anything wrong, but as a parent, you wouldn't want to see your child strapped up like that. Dr. Aldred Williams manages Small Smiles clinics in Langley Park, Maryland, and the district. He says they use papoose boards on small children about half the time. Is part of it so that you can get them in and get them out quickly? Um, yes, that would be part of it because you could potentially spend two hours on a kid who's not who's not stabilized and moving around. That's not cost of it productive for us. But more than a dozen dentists we surveyed said papoose boards are rarely, if ever, used. I have never used a papoose board. Never? Never. Now watch how the dentist gets Miguel to open his mouth. She pinches his nostrils, forcing his mouth open, a practice most dentists abandoned years ago. Is that an acceptable treatment? It's, no, I, I, I don't personally use it, but some dentists do. Dr. Thomas Kim is a pediatric dentist. She's holding his nose shut to get his mouth open. That's not acceptable. I think they are doing, they can do this because their parents are not presenting in this room. At Small Smiles, parents are not allowed to stay with their child. They are told they must stay in the lobby, and the sign says it's because of federal patient privacy regulations. If you can imagine a clinic seeing 80, 85 patients in a day, and all of their parents are back roaming around all over the clinic, it's, it, it is a violation. But in fact, no such regulations exist. Small Smiles is doing a business most dentists won't, treating children on Medicaid. The government reimburses less for dental care than private insurance, but Small Smiles makes up for it on volume. In fact, we've submitted so many claims to one particular managed care organization that they threw up the white flag and says, okay, you don't have to pre-authorize anything. Just do the work, you know, so we flooded the system. There are 63 of these Small Smiles clinics across the country, with nearly three new ones opening every month. They're all managed by a company named Forba, for better access. Dentists and staff are sent to their Colorado offices for training. Our trained professionals make kids feel safe and comfortable. But none of the Maryland, Virginia, or district clinics has a single trained pediatric dentist on staff. Former Small Smiles dental assistant Deborah McDaniel says she was fired for objecting to the way children were being handled. They wanted us to tell parents that they needed services on teeth that were healthy and they were healthy and they didn't need it. Others say they quit because Small Smiles promotes profit over compassion. The bonus range from 500 to 1500 a month. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And to me, that's like hush money. The I-Team learned there's a bonus system for converting patients from a checkup to major procedures on the same day. So it's a competition throughout the country to see who can convert the most patients not give the patients the most care, get them in that back operating room with as many root canal, baby root canals or crowns as possible. That's all you hear through the office is bonus, bonus, bonus. The more crowns we put on, the bigger our bonuses. With a ridiculous production of $7,000. We can't stay in business making $7,000. Every morning, Dr. Williams and his staff review the production goals set by the managers in Colorado. The most glaring statistic yesterday is we only converted two patients. And out of 35, if we only convert two, then we're setting ourselves up for failure. 
I don't want Langley Park to be the laughing stock of the entire Small Smiles Nation. Dr. Williams says too often Medicaid patients break appointments, which is why they do as much work as possible, including baby root canals and crowns, which he calls a small smile specialty. Dr. Williams estimates one in three patients needs the procedure. Up to how many crowns can you do in a sitting? We can do five to six crowns. In one sitting? In one sitting, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even more than that? Even more than that sometimes. Dr. Robert Camps is a nationally recognized authority on pediatric dentistry, and most of his practice in Frederick, Maryland is also on Medicaid. Dr. Camps worries that Small Smiles does baby root canals when simple fillings would work. It does no good for anybody but the dentist, I guess, that's looking for a bonus. It got to the point where the dentist would even um, compete with the other dentists of how much crowns and work they did a day. The clinic here gets 214 tax dollars for every baby root canal and crown it bills. It adds up. Here's a $600 bonus check. Now, I understand that there was a contest for the conversions and that, that you won here at Langley Park? Langley Park won. What did you win? A trophy. For doing conversions? Yes. Mm -hmm. And bonuses? And yeah, they, there was a there was a bonus too. Trina Crosby says multiple procedures can be traumatic for small children. They're sweating. Sometimes they urinate on themselves. They'll throw up. They teach us how to turn them to the side, suction the throw up out, flip them back over because mind you, they're still strapped down. Former dental assistants also say they routinely took X-rays they were not certified to do. Yes, constantly daily basis. Are you certified in Maryland to give x-rays? No, I'm not. When you look at that video, mm -hmm. that adolescent, is she properly shielded? Absolutely not. We showed Dr. Camps all of the video of four-year-old Miguel. Obviously, that's unethical. I mean, by anybody's standards, it's just, it's just unethical. It's just, it's just traumatic for me to watch. I can only imagine how traumatic it is for Miguel. Miguel's mother brought her son to Dr. Camps for follow-up care, and when Small Smiles refused to release the x-rays to his mother, Dr. Camps intervened. They did not take the x-rays of the back teeth where they actually did the treatment. And there, for the first time, this mother got to witness her son's treatment at Small Smiles. But despite the assembly line feel at Small Smiles, Dr. Williams insists they're providing a vital service to children who often don't get regular checkups and generally need more treatments. We aggressively treat these children to eliminate disease in their mouth. Small Smiles makes no apologies for that. I'm, I'm not gonna apologize for being aggressive. Dr. Camp says no one doubts the need for care, but at what cost to these vulnerable children? The company that manages the Small Smiles Clinic says that its audits show that all the work they perform is needed and that parents are informed and give their consent every step of the way. We hope you'll go to our website, www.wjla.com, and give us your feedback. You'll find more information there, including a special hotline number set up by the Medicaid Inspector General's Office. And finally, this was a very difficult process for many of the people who worked at this clinic. Many of them reported that the children suffered verbal abuse during their dental visits, comments like telling a child that if you're not good, then the bad doctor is going to come in. And I'll just say we're going to stay with this story.